This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. going to seem like a bit of a weird video I think but I found some old articles kind of looking back at the pod and I found an article from when the original pod you know the kidney bean was released I think it was 1999 around there and it kind of got me thinking like digital modeling has actually been good enough for a quarter of a century now I think it's time to I don't know, it feels like it's time to move past the conversation where like are these things good enough or you know what is the place of digital modeling because even Michael Landau I found out the other day had a pod programmed it for James Tyler to use on tour like the people that have been making music for years have been using these things successfully and it may not be the easiest thing in the world and it has never been necessarily foolproof to be able to get great tones out of these things, but people have done it and these have been on albums, right? For, as I say, like a quarter of a century, I found uh, Andy Partridge from XTC was talking about an album where he used a, a pod and you listen to um, 
specifically an intro, I'll find out what it was and, and flash it up on screen. But if you didn't know that it was a pod, you wouldn't go, well, yeah, that's a pod. Um, and that has been the case, I think, probably for <laughs> as long as I've been uh, interested in gear and playing guitar. And you think like with each thing that comes along that the, the the conversation doesn't really seem to change that much, which when you look back at, and, and this is what I'll do in this video, look at articles that were written about sort of the pod at the time or retrospectives of the, of the pod 10 years are on, it, things have really just not shifted that much. Although basically the, the main thing that has seemed to happen, like the pod has evolved into a thing that would be on the floor, right? And, you know, things like, the Helix, the Quad Cortex, the Tone Master Pro, the Fractal FM9, what has really changed is, is that these things are incredibly powerful now, incredibly tweakable, and capable of replacing an entire rig, but also super flexible in that you can foot switch everything. And in a way, it's kind of like the pod has become more like a Bradshaw rig type setup, right? Where you can actually have the best of both worlds. Although probably for a lot of people, you're still going to have that same argument. Like, well, it doesn't sound like a tube amp in the room. And I, and I think probably a lot of people would say, well, yeah, you have to actually have a cab in the room. Like Leon Todd says this to, to get that sort of thing going on. And so it's really interesting that as much as the technology has moved along, um, and we are told about the advances in modeling technology by all of the folks and big game changes in technology as well. The conversation has remained pretty much the same. Like they were saying back then that this sounds exactly like a Vox AC30. They're saying now it sounds exactly like this AC30 or, or even these days they also say, well, actually these amps don't sound alike. So when you hear one Vox AC30, kind of the, the, the goalposts have shifted in that way. So they'll say it sounds like our Vox AC30 or that sort of thing. It's just really interesting like to look at it from a marketing point of view, to look at it from a reviewing point of view and to look at it from a user's point of view. I do think it's slightly easier to dial stuff in, particularly like on an HX Stomp or something like that. Um, there's a bit more of a learning curve, like something about the, the pod had quite a quick workflow, although that partly was because it's limited in terms of like actually dialing stuff in like no eqs on here and stuff like that it's just like the tone stack so i think we're in a way better position in terms of actually being able to get really in and tweak a tone even on the, the simpler cheaper modelers you can generally do that and editors and all that sort of stuff but it's still the same kind of conversation around it what do you reckon i found this article in it reads to me like this could have been written about the Line 6 Helix in 2023. This is an article that was written 10 years after the pod came out. And not only that, 2008, if you can remember back that far, I would have been uh, 19 at this point. Um, and I guess I would have been playing a, a pod, something to that effect. Or, uh, no, not, not a Kemper by then. Um, but it's really interesting to me. It just doesn't seem like the world has actually moved on that far from even here. And this is talking about a revolution. I, I just wanted to read through it with you. 10 years ago, Line 6 unleashed the pod on unsuspecting guitarists around the country and instigated a revolution of sorts. Perhaps those are big words, but there's no denying that the pod was one of the first devices to truly harness the potential of digital technology for tone seekers. Suddenly, digital wasn't such a bad word. For a group of people raised on tubes, it was as if we had finally caught up. That, to me, could have been written, like, yesterday. So it was a Premier Guitar article. Anyway, although the pod has undergone a serious evolution over its 10 years, the very first version began a long overdue liberation. No longer were guitarists forced to spend large sums of money on amplifiers just to have options in the studio and on tour. No longer did we need to chart a storage space to house our precious investments or risk blowing up 50 year old capacitors in vintage amps just to get a few bars to tape. We could ditch the practice amp and still have a fully featured pedal board without the cables and power supplies. We could suddenly have our cake and eat it too. And oh, how sweet freedom <laughs> tasted. Crazy to me that this is still basically the same conversation that we still have. I'm talking with Marcus Ryle, who came up 
with line six by the look of it. Uh, when did the original pod come from? Did you foresee digital modeling become as big as it has? So by 2008, they're already kind of, I don't know, maybe modeling was just as big back then by the sound of things. Line six delivered the first digital modeling guitar amps in late 1996. Since the source of the term was software algorithms, we wanted to make modeling available in more than just amplifiers. In early 1998, we introduced Amp Farm, which gave TDM Pro Tools users the ability to have guitar, amplifier, and cabinet available, models available directly in their recording environment. Amp Farm quickly became very popular with professional artists and producers, but could not be used by anyone who didn't have a Pro Tools TDM system, which is a very large investment. Pod was our idea of giving everyone great amp cabin effect tones in a product that would work with any recording system or in any stage at a very affordable price. Although we would, we felt we had designed an excellent sound product that broke new ground, we didn't anticipate it would be embraced so quickly. We have always felt that the potential of digital modeling was huge because having easy access to a wide range of great tones is a great source of musical ins inspiration. Pod just made modeling's acceptance occur much faster than we expected. Now, I don't think maybe the Kemper might be the other thing that has nudged things along a bit but it sounds like even back then digital modeling was accepted by the f people that accepted it um and there's still like a large chunk of people that are like super tube based still right it also is bonkers to me and i would have thought it'd been the other way around that even back then there was a legitimate way to run like the line six stuff within a DAW and that's still a thing that many modeling companies haven't done or made available um, and I didn't realize that Amp Farm actually came before pod so that's kind of cool um, kind of parallel now you've got helix native and the actual hardware uh, t to me it it seems like logically things are gonna move the way of plugins at some point but obviously <laughs> I could be wrong on that because it looks like this has actually been that the plugins came first and then later on the hardware kind of came and you can see this timeline. This is where I jumped onto modeling 2004 with a pod XT live. And I used to use that in four cable method and also just record direct with it here. They're saying things like the, the tone of the pod had a life of its own and was being described internally as organic talking about the, the digital modeling technology and the advances in memory processing power and speed. I think, if you look at like how uh, Axe Effects um, have moved on since sort of the time of this, I think they've easily sort of four times maybe more the power. What what has happened is they've added more amp models. They've made it easier to use this stuff, but it's still not enough to convince some people. Maybe it doesn't have to be, but I just thought it was interesting. I, I also found a couple of images from, from the time where the pod was featured in... Total Guitar, our buddy here, Graham Coxon from Blur. You see the nod, the new pod preamp, every sound you'll ever need. And this is obviously paid for promotion. But Line 6 pod preamp tube tone modeling system. Just want to record great guitar tone. Then there's only one thing for it. You've got to get metaphysical. Grab your axe and prepare to meet pod. Firstly, it acts as a comprehensive direct recording tool for the studio guitarist offering preamp effects and speaker mic emulation function. Secondly, you can use it to give your existing combo a swift kick up the preamp or plug it straight into the PA for playing live. It's the first of these applications where the pod really proves itself though. How much have things really changed much? Right from the word go, the pod is awesome and even the most ardent amplifier is sure to be impressed by the quality of Line 6's recreations. Whether you're plugged into monitor speakers, a recording medium, or even headphones, the tones are fat and deep. Dialing in a sound couldn't be easier. Select an amp model, adjust your drive, EQ and volume, select your effects and let rip. On this type of unit, the clean and lightly driven tones often lack, lack punch and definition. No such fear here. In fact, all the models are immediately recognisable. Tweed blues, for example, etc, etc. It looks cool, it sounds cool, and even the box it comes in is cool. Serious recording tool that's a whole lot of fun. If you don't want to get bogged down in micing up amps or tweaker sp speaker simulators, then look no further. Under £300, if you're a recording guitarist who wants great tone and minimum fuss, the pod isn't just a contender, it's essential. Uh, like construction, features, ease of use, sound, value for money. It's, um, it's really interesting. So that's just, again, my conclusion after, you know, thinking about this stuff quite a lot of the time. Like, for 25 years, it's been good enough that this stuff has 
really been used on some huge records. You're hearing this stuff without knowing it. We are hearing this stuff. Um, we can see on, on YouTube these days a lot of the A-B comparisons. It's really difficult to tell the difference. So if you're worried still about this sort of stuff, I think take heart in it. Um, the conversation hasn't really moved on in 25 years very much at all. And I think there's still a bunch of people that are never really going to be convinced that this digital modeling stuff is, uh, you know, something that they want to get involved in. For me personally, I've had to, and I've been there since 2004, sort of, I guess that's like six years after this kind of stuff happened. Um, and it's been a part of my life this whole time. And I think that's okay. Um, uh, Hopefully, I think there's place in the world for, for both tube amps and digital modeling. I just think it's kind of interesting that the conversation hasn't really evolved that much in, in the quarter of a century, weirdly. <laughs>